Hello, a great welcome to the series on Abacus. Myself, Jarajan P. This is tutorial number eight. It explains the elastoplastic analysis of a simply supported steel beam using Abacus. This tutorial will be split into two parts, part A and B. While part A cover modules such as parts, property, assembly, loads, and meshing, part B explains the results through the visualization module. So this is part A of the tutorial. So let me first take you to the problem statement. So as shown in the sketch, the elastoplastic analysis will be carried out for a simply supported beam. And the beam has a span of 3000 millimeters. It is subjected to a concentrated load of P at the center. It's a steel beam. And the cross section of the beam is shown here. The section is IP450 as per the European standards and the overall depth of the section is 450mm, the flange width is 190mm, the thickness of the web and the flanges are indicated here and the center to center of the flanges, it is calculated as 435.4 and it will be used in the modeling of the shell element and a simple calculation of the plastic moment capacity shows that the beam is likely to plasticize at an approximate load of 800 kN. So accordingly, the details of the applied load is as shown here. The load will be applied monotonically in increasing way along a straight line with a value of 0 at a time t equal to 0 and a maximum of 800 kN at a time period of 1.0 seconds. And the material description is shown here. The true stress strain curve is idealized as a bilinear stress strain curve for the steel as shown here. And uh, with the two significant points, one is the yield stress and the other one is the ultimate stress. And the yield stress for the material is 355 MPa and the corresponding strain can be easily calculated as 355 divided by ES. And uh, the ultimate stress is 470 Newton per mm square with a corresponding total strain that's a plastic strain of a 0.18 that is 18 percentage so let me take you to the abacus now so let us start with the part module so we shall create a part for the beam name it as a beam and the modeling space will be 3d type will be deformable base feature will be shell selected as a shell and the type will be extrusion and let us have an approximate size as 1000 mm for the sketcher. Continue. Now here we shall draw two lines, one representing the web and the other representing the flanges. So let us proceed with the web portion, draw a straight line. Now let us keep the depth of this web portion as 435.4. Okay, so now let, let us draw a line that represents the flange. So draw a line first. Let us keep the length of this line as a, the flange width that is equal to 190 mm. So now we shall move this line that represents the flange to the respective portions in the web. So that is a straightaway proceed for uh, Moving this part. So we shall first copy this part. So select select the portion. Done. So let us pick this point. Okay, so we have created now the the top lines. Similarly, let us move this part and the position corresponding to the bottom flange let's move it okay fine so our sketching is complete so now we can proceed for the extrusioning so let us uh, sketch it and the extrusion depth will be chosen as the span 
at least 3000 millimeters okay so as you can see yes the part beam is created properly now we don't have anything to do in this uh, module so let's go back directly to the property module in the property module we shall define the property of the material create the sections and assign it to the beam so let us proceed for the definition of the property so in the mechanical go to the elastic define the elastic properties of the steel material so 2 e5 newton per m square and the Poisson's ratio will be 0 0.30 so remember that we shall use consistently newton and millimeters all throughout the tutorial so let us go and populate the plastic properties of the material so here the yield stress will be 355 and the corresponding plastic strain there is there is no plastic strain component here so we'll keep it as zero and then at the ultimate stress of 470 we have a plastic strain component of 0.178 and remember this 0.178 is nothing but the total strain that is the 0.18 minus the elastic strain that is approximately 355 by years and that works out to be 0.178 so we have defined the elastic as well as the plastic properties of the material and let us just rename this as steel steel s355 so that is okay so now let us proceed for creating the sections and the section we need to create two sections one for the flange and other for the web so let us create one for the flange so section flange and the category will be the shell homogeneous continue now we shall proceed for uh, populating the shell thickness for the flange portion and uh, we know that the thickness was uh, you can say that it is 14.6 uh, so that is 14.6 14.6 okay and we will keep the material be as steel as 355 and all other parameters will be kept as a default so this is okay for the section flange now we shall create a section for the web so we'll call it as section web section web and the category will be the shell homogeneous okay fine and now we need to populate the shell thickness that represents the web and we know the web thickness that is around i think uh, 9.4 yes 9.4 mm so just don't reach 9.4 mm so we'll keep all other parameters as the default and ensure that the material is the uh, steel as 355 so this is okay for us so we created two sections now we need to assign these sections to the beam Pro proceed for uh, assignment so select the regions let us first assign the sections for the flange so select all the regions that represents the flange we have got uh, four regions that's okay done and now select the section section is the flange and all of this everything is all right and uh, remember here shell offset or the generation of the section was such that we assumed the center lines will correspond to the middle surface so ensure this is a selection properly okay so as you can see the color of the flange cushion has turned green indicating that a proper uh, section is assigned to it now similarly let us proceed in the assigning the section to the web portion so we shall select in this case the web okay done but in this case the section will be the section web and all other parameters will be the same okay so now the section assignment is complete now you can also look into the thickness of the various parts of this beam for example the flange thickness and the web thickness also because this is a, if you see the section it is only a line diagram representation you can also see what thickness have been assigned for that what you can do is that you can go to the web and in the web there is a portion known as a part display option and the part display option if you see the last there is a render shell element thickness apply so now you can see that here the flanges as well as the web is shown with their appropriate thickness look here the, the thickness of the flange is assigned thickness of the web is also shown so this is how you you can verify whether the proper thickness have been assigned or not so now you can go back and uh, you can uh, go to the part display options and just uncheck it okay so that is okay for us so 
So this means we have uh, completed the, the property module. Now we can go back to the assembly module, wherein uh, we have to create only instance of one part, that's a beam. So create the instance and select the part that's a beam. And uh, the instance type will be selected as dependent, wherein we will uh, go for the meshing on the part. And there is also one more instance type known as the independent, wherein we will uh, mesh the entire assembly in the instance uh, in the module itself. Okay, so we can have it as okay. So fine. So our uh, assembly module is complete. Now we can proceed for uh, the step module. And the step module, uh, let's create a new analysis step. I will call it as a step beam. I will call it as a step beam. Okay, and I will place it after my default initial uh, uh, step creator by backers. The analysis procedure will be static general, continue. And in this case, uh, we are investigating the nonlinear behavior of the beam. So accordingly, the NL geom feature, it will be kept on here. And uh, going uh, to the automatic stabilization, as this simple problem, uh, we need not to specify any automatic stabilization procedure here. And now we let us go back to the incrementation. And in the incrementation, we shall ask or instruct the backers to start with an, a, a step 0 0.01. And we will we'll keep the maximum step as a 0 0.05. And let us keep this uh, minimum as minus 10. And uh, thousand, thousand. Okay, that's good enough for uh, this particular problem. And all other uh, parameters will be kept uh, as default. So this is okay for us. Now this means that uh, we have uh, uh, created the step, and now we need to instruct the backers what must be the variables for which the output database must be uh, created or developed. So for that we need to create the field output, go to the field, create field output. Let me call it as F output beam. And uh, step will be beam, okay fine, continue. And now what we can do is we can proceed for selecting the stresses, okay. And the stresses also you can see that there are many stress components available. So, so we need not have to, so whatever is required you can just select it because these components may not be required to us, we'll select only the required ones or you can keep all the components, all these stress components as a default itself. So here as you can see that I have selected only the S stress components and its invariants. So that's okay for the stresses. Now we can go for the displacements. Obviously in the displacements, uh, we have got again many variables. Let us keep all this uh, parameters because these parameters are not required for this problem. We require only the displacement, the resultant displacement as well as its components. We'll keep just like that. Okay, so the displacement is properly selected. That's okay for us. Now, uh, we have here the, the forces and the reactions. Now, if you go to the forces and the reactions, okay. So out of this forces and reactions, we would like to select one parameter I will select only the parameter known as SF. That's a section forces and moments. So if we want to cap, uh, if we want to obtain the total force acting at any section, these parameters section F must be first of all initiated in the output field output variable list. And all others we can keep it as a uh, not important for us. You can see that there are many many uh, you know uh, field variables available in Abacus and you can set them default or you can set whatever is just required. Okay, fine. So means that we have selected among the force and reactions or the section forces. So that is good enough for us. Okay, for the whole model and this is okay. So means we have declared all the field outputs through the field output uh, manager. Now this means we have completed the step module. So let us proceed to the load module. So applying loads in Abacus uh, is a tricky issue, uh, especially when uh, it's a constant at the load, just as the one we have explained in our tutorial. So rather than applying uh, to a point, 
I would like to apply this load onto a section because if you apply a concentrated load directly to any point in the model, it is likely to cause the local uh, stress concentrations and would arrive at unacceptable results. So, you know, to apply the load directly to a section, it is required that we proceed for uh, partitioning of this beam. Uh, we would like to create a partition at the mid span. So, to create, so uh, we have to go back to part module. So, first of all, let us create a data plane using which we would like to create a partition. So, this is create the data plane. So, it asks the principal plane from which to offset it. So, XY plane. So, let us provide the distance that is 1500. So, this means that we have created a partition at the mid span. Using this partition, we shall proceed for uh, uh, dividing this beam into two segments. So, go for this. So, here we have partition phase using a data plane. So, press this. So, select the faces to partition. So, we would like to select the entire done. So, now select a data plane. So, select this data plane which you have just now created. So, create partition. So, now you can see that this entire beam it is divided into two segments. So, if you press this, this is one segment and this is another segment. So, we did a partitioning. Now, we have a separate section now here at mid span through which we would like to apply the load to a point. Okay. So now let us create the so-called reference points, uh, which will be useful for the application of the loads and also for the specification of the boundary conditions. So we will create three reference points, one at the CG at mid span and the other at the CG of the section at the two end supports. So let us uh, go to the interaction module. Okay, here there is a section called create the reference point. So create the so select a point to act as a reference point. So first, so I would like to select the centroid of the section at the mid span. So for this, what we can do is that we can go for uh, deselecting because now we have two segments. If you want to see the section here, let us remove the first half. So here there is an option uh, like uh, remove the selected. So let us select the entity to remove this one. So done. Now we are in a position to see the cross-section and the mid-span. This is my cross-section. Now I would like to create my reference point. So you can just press RP. Okay. So now this is the CG of my cross-section. I can select it. So you can see that yes, a reference point is generated at the section centroid at the mid-span. Now a similar reference point I would like to create at the end sec sections which will be used later for the specification of the support conditions. So now let me create a reference point at this section. So for which I would like to better rotate it. Okay, now this is okay for me. Now I can press the same RP here. So it will ask me select a point to act as a reference point. So I will choose this point which is my center of the section. So we have generated a reference point known as RP2. So in a similar way, we would like to create another reference point at the end span. Oh, so let us just add the other portion also. Right, okay. So we have RP1 here, RP2 at this section, and at the other end support also, we would like to create another reference point. So create a reference point. So select this point. Okay, fine. So now we find that we have created three reference points RP1, RP2, RP3. Now remember that RP1 will be used to tie the entire cross section with this reference point RP1 and RP3 and RP2 will be used for the specification of boundary conditions. Now let us try to let us try to attach the point RP1 to the mid section. How this will be done? This will be done through the so-called constraint. So before uh, going to the constraint, let me just remove this section once again because we want to tie this point RP1 to the cross section. So let me remove this aside. So I will just create this one. Done. Okay, fine. Now I would like to tie this cross section with this reference point RP1. This will be done through the constraint command. So you just press this create constraint. So let me, for easy identification, I will call it as constraint RP1. Okay, constraint RP1. 
So this will be done through the coupling. So continue. Then it will ask you select the constraint control point. So RP1 is my control control point done. Now it will ask you to select the constraint region type. I will select a new region which consists of essentially the entire cross section. So what you can do is you go on selecting this cross section as the node region. And we shall proceed for tying this cross section. As you can see, we have selected the entire cross section as the node region. Okay, done. Okay, now we are going to do the all degrees of freedom we are going to constrain. So, okay, so now you will find a symbol. All the lines are being, all the cross section points are being tied to the RP1 okay, through the coupling. So, we can say that now RP1. If you apply a load at RP1, it means that it is applied straight through this cross section. So, in a similar way, we have created uh, the coupling of RP2 and RP3 with the cross section as shown here. For example, if you see the constraint manager, you can see that yes, constraint RP2, RP3 are already created. Now, we are in a position to apply the loads as well as the boundary conditions. So, let us go back to the load. So, first, we shall uh, create the boundary conditions. So, Create the boundary condition. So first, we have one and as the pint. So BC, I'll call it as a pint, right? And it will be applied in the initial step. So this will be mechanical displacement and rotation. Continue. And it will ask you to select the regions for the boundary condition. Now I would like to apply this on this end. So rather than taking the cross section, now I can apply it directly to the reference point. So I'll apply to RP2. Okay, done. Now, obviously, for a pin end, we know that u1, u2, u3 are to be restrained. So it is done here. Okay, so you can say that yes, it is already created. Now let us proceed for creating one more boundary condition. So we'll create as BC roller because I have the roller support on the other end of the beam. So we'll keep it on the step initial only. So this is okay. And now we have to select the regions. So we can select the reference point. So when I say the the, the boundary condition is to be applied on the reference point. I mean, it has to be applied on the entire cross section. Okay, so done. So now, here obviously, I want to ensure that yes, U3 must be allowed. So I will restrain only U1 and U2. Okay, okay. So means I applied the boundary conditions at the two ends. Now, we can proceed for applying the loads. So we'll create a new load. Let me see that load at so this is applied at RP1. We load at RP1 and analysis step will be step beam. Okay, and it will be mechanical. And this is a concentrated load. Okay, so continue. Now it will ask select the point for the load. So RP1. Now, if when I apply the load at RP1, it, it does mean that it is uniformly applied over the entire section of the mid span. Okay, so, so I can say that done so now we have to apply it has to be applied in the y direction cf2 so remember we are using the newton system so this is 800,000 okay 800,000 and in the minus sign and uh, this we want to apply it in a triangular pattern so we can uh, compose a amplitude abacus so I will use a new amplitude function. So I'll call it as amplitude triangle because we are not going to apply this load all together at t equal to zero. We are going to apply it gradually, increasing from zero to one second. So, so let us have it as a triangle. Triangle, okay, fine. Now this is tabula. So we can have it as that at a time t equal to zero, the amplitude will be zero. Okay, and at a time t equal to 1, my amplitude will be full. Okay, so this is how we describe a triangular pattern. Okay, so at a time 0 and 1, the amplitude will be 0 and 1. Okay, okay, fine. Now select it here, the map triangle, amplitude triangle. Okay, fine. So it means, yes, you can see that yes, we have applied the load on the uh, point RP1. That means we have literally applied a load of 800 kN directly over this cross section. So I think that that's all for uh, this module load.
now we are now we can uh, directly go to the mesh this is a very uh, simple model actually so this means that we need not have to go for any kind of a local seeding etc we can straight away start with the uh, the global seed itself that sh that should be good enough for us so we'll apply for uh, for example uh, an approximate global size of 20 mm we'll see how it is so apply so you can say that yes global seeds are being shown here okay now we can let us go for uh, uh, how the mesh control should be done so we have to select the regions we will select the entire region done okay and here we will uh, go for a quad element shape okay quad element shape we will go quad means quadrilateral and uh, the technique for the meshing will use as a free so this is okay for us having done that done that let us proceed for uh, selecting a proper element we'll do with this button it will again ask you select the regions done okay now obviously our standard the element will be a standard shell element and we'll use a, a geometrical linear order okay and all other parameters will keep like that and so remember the element type that we chose we have chosen for this analysis is s4r which indicates a four knotted doubly curved decor tension with a reduced integration so this is okay for us so having done that uh, we are ready to uh, mesh the entire beam yes so you can see that yes it is thoroughly meshed and uh, i think that in this case uh, we need not have to go for any kind of uh, uh, verifying the mesh so because it's a very simple shape okay so having done that now we are ready to submit the job to abacus okay so let us create a job so we'll create the job as a job to say that it is a beam job beam okay so this is a model one is continued now it's okay now we can uh, proceed for submitting the job submit